Welcome back to our lecture series, Math 1050, College Algebra for Students at Southern Utah University. As usual, I'll be a professor today, Dr. Andrew Musselnine. In lecture 13, we're going to continue learning about systems of linear equations that we learned about in lectures 11 and 12. Now, the primary method we've been utilizing for solving systems of linear equations are the methods of substitution and elimination. And frankly speaking, they, they do okay at solving systems of equations. Now I say they do okay because we've only been focusing on two by two and three by three linear systems. Two by two meaning that we have two equations with two unknowns, uh, two variables. And for a three by three system, I mean we have three equations and three unknowns. All right, our, our methods do okay in those settings, but there's there's a lot of other settings we have to consider. What happens if you have two unknowns, but like a thousand equations, right? Uh, that's that's what we might call an overdetermined system. Or what if you have five variables, but only three equations? You have this underdetermined system. We haven't really explored too much with that. And then, heck, let's talk about that. What if you have five variables? We have 10 variables. What if you have 25 variables, 100 variables? Um, our methods of substitution and elimination are actually kind of clunky when looking at larger systems of equations. And it turns out we can make the process much more efficient by taking off a lot of the baggage. And in order to do so, we're going to introduce the notion of matrices. So what is a matrix? Uh, the simple answer is a matrix is a rectangular array of numbers. Uh, more precisely, if we have two positive integers, m and n, we say that an m by n matrix is a rectangular array of real or maybe complex numbers with m rows and n columns. An illustration of such a thing you can see right here. This is an example of a two by three matrix. When it comes to describing the dimensions of a matrix, the m by n, we always describe the rows first and the columns second. It's like reverse alphabetical. Uh, the If this is a two by two matrix, it means you have two rows like so, and you have three columns. So the rows are telling you how far up and down your matrix is gonna go. The columns tell you how far to the left and right your matrix is gonna go. And so a two by three matrix will have six numbers in it, exactly two times three there. You have these six numbers. So this two by three matrix, you see that you have a one, negative two, negative one, negative one, three, and five. Uh, we often refer to the numbers in the matrix by their position. So this number right here is in the first row, first column. So we call it the 1, 1 position. This number is in the first row, second column. So it's in the 1, 2 position. All right. This negative 1 is in the 1, 3 position because it's the first row, third column. Uh, this one is in the 2, 1 position. Uh, you can think of these as like coordinates that tell you where the number is located in the matrix. Second row, first column. You always talk about the rows first in a matrix. This is the 2, 2 position. Uh, it's a little ballerina. And this one is the, th uh, the 2, 3 position. Second row, third column. Uh, and so this matrix, this 2 by 3 matrix, has... Uh, these six positions there. All right, so the matrix is this rectangular array that's useful for capturing data. You can kind of think of it as just it's, it's the mathematics of a spreadsheet. That's what a that's what a matrix is. It's just a spreadsheet here. Now, what this is relevant, why is this is relevant for systems of linear equations is that whenever you have a system of linear equations put in standard form, we could encode uh, this linear system as a matrix and we can solve the system using said matrix. Okay, so consider the following uh, what we would call a three by three linear system. It's three by three because it has three equations and three unknowns. This, this label of three by three is actually foreshadowing the dimensions of the coefficient matrix that we're going to talk about right now. Um, when you have a uh, when we have a system of linear equations like this, we're going to create a matrix, the so-called coefficient matrix, which is going to have as many rows as there are equations. So the rows of your matrix will coincide with your equations in the linear system. And you're going to have a number of columns equal to the number of variables. So each column will coincide with a variable in the so-called coefficient matrix, and each row is going to coincide with an equation inside of the coefficient matrix. So looking at this linear system, the first equation is x minus 2y plus z equals 0. For the moment, we're going to ignore everything to the right 
of the equations here. Uh, that is to say that if you move all the variables to the left-hand side, combine like terms if necessary, put all the constants on the right-hand side, we're gonna ignore those constants on the right-hand side and just fixate on the variables for a moment. If I just look at the coefficients of those variables, the coefficient of x is a one, the coefficient of y is a negative two, and the coefficient of z is a positive one. I'm gonna record just their coefficients in their same order, and I'm gonna put them in alphabetical order, x, y, and z. And so I record the coefficients one, negative two, and one. When you look at the second equation, if we record the coefficients of the variables, and I'm gonna do this exact same order I did on the first row, which in this case is alphabetical, I don't see an x there, which is to actually suggest that the coefficient of x is zero. So I put a zero here in my matrix. The coefficient of y is a 2, and the coefficient of z is a negative 8 here. Whenever you subtract a variable, that means its coefficient is negative, and make sure that negative sign is put inside the coefficient matrix. The third row, the third row here, again, we record the variable coefficients, a negative 4 for x, a 5 for y, a 9 for z. So each of these rows in the matrix coincides with an equation, 1, negative 2, 1, uh, this one here, we get 0, 2, negative 8. And then here we get negative 4, 5, and 9. Now, each column of the matrix coincides with the variable. So the first column gives you the coefficients of x, 1, 0, negative 4. Uh, the second variable gives you the second column, negative 2, 2, and negative 5 there. Excuse me, positive 5. Uh, and then the third column is going to give you the coefficients of z there, 1, negative 8, 9. This is then the coefficient matrix of the linear system, and it encodes all of the variables. It turns out if we organize the coefficients by rows and columns like we did, we don't actually have to write down the variables anymore because I know the first column is the first variable, x, and the first row is the first equation, okay? But also these constants on the right-hand side are also necessary to know them as you solve the system of equations. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a column just for the constant terms. So we write them over here, zero, eight, and negative nine. Then we're gonna draw a vertical line that separates the coefficient matrix from this extra column. Um, and this vertical line is a substitute for the equations, the equal signs. So the vertical line goes exactly where the equal signs would be. And so the coefficient matrix plus this other column is what we call the augmented matrix. Augmented as suggested, we've added something to it. We've added something to the matrix. What? It was the coefficient matrix plus the new column for the constants. That's where we get this augmented matrix. Uh, now, in a course like Linear Algebra Math 2270, a lot of study goes into this coefficient matrix because the coefficient matrix says a lot about a lot of things. Uh, now, for our purposes, we're going to be fixated on this augmented matrix because inside the augmented matrix, we have put all of the data that we need for the system of linear equations. We've encoded the linear system as a matrix. And now, as we will see in the next videos or so, as we reduce and process this augmented matrix, we can create the solution to the linear system in a much more efficient manner than we've been doing with our methods of substitution and elimination.